Show Land, and welcome to another episode of the G Show Podcast. I am G1, and this is an impromptu Godzilla block party special. Holy shit! Look, all right, I'm super excited right now, and I might be like overdoing it. I'm, I don't care. I am not. The first official image for Godzilla King of the Monsters has dropped. Michael Doherty has given an exclusive interview with Entertainment Weekly. They got the very first look. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh, I'm, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. But this would not have been possible if it wasn't for my left hand on a G show. G73 Chase for putting this to bring this to my attention. Brother, thank you so much. And thank you for joining me on this impromptu podcast. Oh, fucking of course. I love this shit. I was like, so I was wondering that like for like the past couple of days, like the comic cons right around the corner. I mean, usually something is supposed to be teased or leaked. I've been waiting all over the place for something like a, t- a trailer to leak and show up or, or something from the movie. And it finally happened. And I am like a kid in a candy store and I am like looking at this thing, this picture. And I am like, I just like, I'm like, why, is, why can't we watch the movie now? I mean, what, May is a long way away. <laughs> <laughs> you are not lying, my brother. I am looking at this image right now. And all right. Um, the, the image obviously is going to be up as the uh, pick for this podcast. But I'm going into, I'm going to describe, it's, it's Godzilla spitting fire up into the air and up into the heavens in water. It looks like there's a, it, it could be like, half an island, maybe a keys, but it's so gorgeous. It's raining, obvi- uh, apparently. This is a gorgeous pick, man. This, it is, it oh, is majestic. Maje- thank you. Yeah, that is exactly where I was trying to get. Majestic. This is what the King of the Monsters is all about right there. That is Godzilla. And yeah, he got a little belly. I ain't mad. I got a little belly too. You know what I'm saying? I can't spit the blue flame like this main man can. And it is Gorgeous! Oh God, it's so moody. It's so big. It's majestic, like you said. Good Lord! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Like, like you said, dude. I was just patiently waiting until Comic Con. I really was. I was like, that's a week and a half away. I got no problem. A, a, a week from now, we're gonna get the anime part two on Netflix, okay? And and then Comic Con. I have no problem. But then they go ahead and they do this, and you could you could hear it in my voice, like. The excitement is real, man. The excitement is real. Yeah, in all our voices. Yeah, you know? <laughs> the, the voices in our heads are excited. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. And I like I didn't expect this to drop, but yet here I am. Exclusive First Look Entertainment Weekly. Thank you guys for putting this out. I mean, and there was uh an, there's an actually a uh a little article to accompany this with. And thank you, Chase, for hooking me up with that also. So, all right, let, let's let's break this down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read. I'm going to read some of this right here. I'm going to read some of this. The article that accompanies this picture. This picture is dope. I'm sorry. I just can't get over. First off, this picture. This picture is dope. Like, God damn, brother. This is my new favorite thing. Okay. Here's the article from Entertainment Weekly. Thank you, Chase, again. <clears throat> the tagline is Godzilla unleashes atomic breath in Godzilla King of the Monsters first look. Dope. I'm super stoked. First off, he's spitting that fire up in the air. Uh, G73, do you think that he's spitting at Mothra or do you think that he's spitting at a one king of terror with three heads? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, the reason why I don't want to answer that yet is because Mike Doherty kind of mentioned something in this article when I was reading part of it. All so right. I think I want to wait to dis- discuss that. You know what? I just, I, I, I'm going to backtrack and apologize to everybody out there. I just dumb, I dumbed out right now because not only does Mothra have wings and King Ghidorah has wings, but fucking Rodan's in this movie and Rodan is my second favorite monster in the Toho verse. So slap to my face. That was dumb on my part. That's my excitement is going crazy. It's fucking with my brain. But um, maybe he's been at Rodan. But let's read this article. Okay, Godzilla unleashes atomic breath and Godzilla king of the monsters first look. God damn, I love you, Image. You're beautiful. <clears throat> Ready? Here we go. About five years have passed in Godzilla king of the monsters out May 31st, 2019, since the events depicted in 2014's Godzilla. 
which isn't nearly enough time for the people to stop freaking out about the discovery that they share the planet with a gargantuan lizard. <laughs> okay, lizard. That's funny. Um, the, so here's Mike Doherty saying this. The world is reacting to Godzilla in the same way we would react to any other terrifying incident in that we are overreacting. That's exactly what we're doing right now. That's funny. Good God Almighty. That's so funny. That love is, the irony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, okay, he says, director Mike Doherty, whose previous credits include the horror movie Krampus, which I did enjoy. Godzilla hasn't been seen since that destructive finale, but... There's paranoia and endless speculation about whether he is the only one out there or whether we're threatened by others like his kind, which we know that's a fact because if you've seen the end of Kong Skull Island, well, hello, Cisco. Spoilers. Right, right. Okay, King of the Monsters makes it enormously clear that there are other big beasts, notably the three-headed King Ghidorah, the giant insect Mothra, and another flying monster, Rodan. Don't just call him another flying monster, Rodan, okay? Don't do that. Don't do that. Who, in the original Japanese movies, could create hurricane force winds. Do that. Please do that. Please do that. I, I, that's what I want to see. Yes. Um, and I'll get, Here's Mike Darty. I'm calling him again. Rodan's been kind of a sidekick character, but I've always had a soft spot for him, says Darty. So do I. G1 saying that. I do. I love Rodan. <laughs> In a lot of ways, he's more powerful than Godzilla. <clears throat> Bullshit! Um, <laughs> he's like this winged A-bomb. That's a really cool description. I gotta be honest. I like that. I think we've done him justice. Oh, my fingers are crossed for that. That's the end quote from Mike Doherty. So here's the, the, the rest of the article. But let's not forget Godzilla himself, who reveals he has the ability to exhale atomic breath. Um, yeah, we know that. Especially as fans, we've been knowing that. that that's just... That's a staple of Godzilla, and I'm not talking about the 98 movie, but that's a staple of Godzilla. <clears throat> Can Doherty expand on that description? Here comes Doherty again. Not without giving too much away, he laughs, but it takes place at a very key moment, and it's sort of call to arms? Really? Now that's very interesting. Okay. Woo! Hang on, I'm sweating a bit. The 2019 film's human characters include Dr. Emma Russell, who's Vera, who played by Vera Farmiga, who we're going to talk about in a minute, a scientist working for the beastie hunting organization Monarch. I don't take that away. Don't, don't put beastie, just put beast hunting, okay? Uh, and her daughter Madison, who's portrayed by Stranger Things star Millie Bobby Brown. Thumbs up, my lady. I love you. The pair are kidnapped by what Doherty describes as a mysterious organization with their own plans for the creatures. Huh, kind of like Space Godzilla. Just a little bit, right there. You know what I'm talking about? All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the last of the interview. The director cast Kyle Chandler, Kyle Chandler as Mark Russell, Emma's ex-husband and Madison's father, who embarks on a rescue mission in cahoots with two more Monarch members played by Godzilla veterans. Oh, Ken Watanabe and Sally Hawkins. Oh, shit, that's going to be dope. Dope, I'm happy to have that. Absolutely. Oh, uh, man, where's Ford Brody? Bring back Ford Brody. Um, given that Chandler also co-starred Peter Jackson's 2005 remake of King Kong, perhaps he may stick around for the next installment in Legendary's Entertainment and Legendary Entertainment's MonsterVerse 2020's Godzilla vs. Kong. Speaking of which, does Doherty set up that face-off in this film? And here's his quote. It's not like we're bending over backwards to introduce Kong, but there's definitely some breadcrumbs, says the director. Breadcrumbs the size of boulders, we assume. Wow, dude. Yeah, I mean, look. Oh, man, I just literally, I watched Kong Skull Island the other day, and I really enjoyed it a lot more than I have uh, since it came out in theaters. And I've seen that movie several times, more than several times now. Um, but for whatever reason, I really enjoyed it this time around. And, of course, that end credit stinger with, uh, you know, the, the future, basically, of the legendary MonsterVerse, seeing those uh, cave paintings of Mothra Rodan, King Ghidorah, Godzilla and King Ghidorah fighting, and then, of course, the big man's roar at the end. Man, it was really something. I was like, yeah, that's it. That's how you fucking knock it out the park, right? So I'm like, I can't wait to see what Godzilla 2 does. And again, I was I was really pacing myself because Comic-Con is just in a week and a half. I ain't got no worries. Right around the corner. But then this happens. Then this happens. And now, all bets are off. I go crazy. I read this article, and there are things to take out of it. What jumps out to you 
Chase, what jumps out to you in this article that that that, that had you scratching your head? Like, wait a minute, what are we talking about? Um, <laughs> pretty much almost everything um, <laughs> because it's all exciting. I'm like, what the hell? Um, just I kind of the part where he says Godzilla's atomic breath becomes a call to arms. Ooh. Um, that part specifically is kind of like. So, like, are they still sticking with the last resort deal? Or, like, what's going on? Like, 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 obviously in this picture, it's upgraded. It looks bigger. It looks powerful. It, it you know, it looks stronger. So I'm like, like, what's the deal with them call to arms business? But something I'm really excited about is them talking about basically part of the plot, you know, and, you know, Two, two of the characters get kidnapped and, you know, it's secret agent Dr. Sarazawa and co <laughs> going to rescue him. I'm, yes. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> I, do, I love that. I love that. It, it, it's crazy when they say, like, secret organization. It re- really reminded me of that, um, of Godzilla versus Space Godzilla, where that guy is, is trying to use Mickey uh, to control Godzilla, right? But like yeah, he's like yeah. he's like working for the Yakuza or some shit. It's so fucking random. And I'm like, wait, what's going on? But like that's not saying that that's what this movie is gonna be, but it just is what it reminded me of, and it makes me laugh a bit. But there's nothing funny about how awesome this image is and the description, the first legit little synopsis we've gotten from this movie. And yeah, the call to arm things, wow, that that actually kind of backs up a couple of uh, uh, things that I've said in previous podcast assumptions where I there's no doubt in my mind now, especially where I'm reading this, that King Ghidorah, King Ghidorah does not die in this movie. There's no doubt in my mind that in Godzilla vs. Kong, yeah, they're going to fight, but it's kind of going to be like Batman v. Superman, and I don't mean that it's going to suck like Batman v. Superman, but I mean... They're going to fight, but they're going to have to, at the end, take on a bigger threat. And that bigger threat, I still believe, will be King Ghidorah. I do not believe they kill off Ghidorah. It's just one of those things, man. It's He's been around for so long in the Godzilla mythos, you know? He's always that creature. He's, he's literally, if Godzilla's Batman, King Ghidorah is the Joker. And I don't mean it like that, but go back to the show of, he cackles a lot, and then cackle is another word for laughing. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Uh, to me, King Ghidorah is always synonymous with Godzilla as far as being like the ultimate foe. And I love, and I, I love that it seems that's where they're going. But that call to arms thing means a lot. Also, it means because we already know we're gonna have Rodan and Mothra in this movie. Also, uh, we might have some Muto pop up. You know, some brand new creatures. But what if, and we don't know yet, and this is all speculation here, what if, come Comic-Con, there's like, let's say, a joint thing with Toho, and they say, yeah, you know what? We let Legendary open, we, we opened up our doors to Legendary, and we let them cherry pick what or who they wanted. And especially what, what Toho is trying to do as far as uh, globalize Godzilla and really market it globally, why wouldn't you have this Hollywood movie, which is going to be seen by more people, right, than a Toho production? And that's not knocking that. It's not knocking it at all. But it's just a fact. A, a, a Hollywood big budget monster movie is going to be seen by more people around the globe. Why wouldn't Toho say, go ahead, cherry pick from our farm, use what you feel you must use, who you may need, just go ahead and get it out there. Especially when Toho is trying to create this global franchise using Godzilla. I just think it's very smart if they go that route. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying if they go that route. It would be a smart play on their part. And for us fans, I mean, shit, I I, I am not arguing. I will not argue. Chase, what do you think? Um, (laughs) Um, I think that... What you said was a bunch of crazy. Like, that was a lot to take in. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really excited. I am, I am, I am excited, dude. I am really excited. <laughs> um, with that being said, like, like, we already talked about, like, 
you know, Mike Doherty saying he's bringing other monsters, like, why would it not be either original monsters of his own creation or something we've seen from Toho already? You know, that's highly, it's a highly, it's highly possible, but it's kind of hard to like speculate. Um, but I, I would dig it. <laughs> I would love to see like, you know, some other monsters returning. But the thing is, is like, they got to be careful of that too, because if they add, you know, King Ghidorah into this film, which is supposed to be like, you know, the triple A villain here. If they add another monster, like let's just say off of, you know, off of the roster, either like Gaidan or or Angiris or something, it's gonna be kind of like, well, what are they gonna do with these monsters? Are they, you know, are not, is it going to take away from King Ghidorah's spotlight? So they got to be a little bit careful with that. So I'm, I'm just wondering like what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. Um, but it's, it's interesting. And he's saying if King Ghidorah is not going to die, I wonder if Rodan and Mothra are going to stick around too. And then basically Godzilla versus Kong is just going to be Godzilla destroy all monsters. Good point. Cause that's um, where I was going. That's exactly where I was going. That's a great point. I was thinking. And, yeah. And then it's just going to be Mothra, Rodan, Kong, Godzilla, King Ghidorah, just all going out on each other. I could definitely see that. Well, but, it, it, the thing is, is like Mike Doherty said specifically, I am designing other creatures. So that's where I'm like scratching my head. What are these other creatures going to play? Because like, it's kind of pointless to just have them as cannon fodder and just die. I mean, like I, I just, it just opens up a whole bunch of questions. It does. It definitely so, does. Well, let me yeah, ask you. Yeah. Well, Kong Skull Island did something similar in that regard. They yeah, did. but but it didn't seem like those were creatures in the aspect of Kong fighting them. Um, well, for the most part, it was. I mean, we got the squid fights, the uh, um, the skull crawlers. Uh, yeah, we didn't get to see the log creature, the the insectoid that I like to call Dub Megalon. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no offense, brother. But I like to dub that one Megalon. Um or even the the the, the giant water buffaloes, you know? Yeah. But they were well, they, I mean like those were definitely, I mean, obviously other creatures in the movie, but they 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 didn't seem like they didn't they weren't they weren't mentioned. And Mike Doherty, the way he mentioned it, it seemed like they're supposed to be playing some type of role. And you know, that's where I'm just kind of like, you know, where is he going? Right. Right. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break right now. Uh, we'll be right back after this. All right. And we're back. So um, real quick. So we were just talking about, uh, and you made a really good point, uh, of destroy all monsters. I was actually going to, I was going to talk about that. I was going to bring that up. Remember when Gareth Edwards said he had this idea where yeah, it yeah. would eventually That's exactly lead where it's to coming that? From too. Yeah. So I'm not, I swear, honestly, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not all convinced that Gareth Edwards doesn't have anything to do with any of this. He might have like a, a producer role or some kind of creative input with Legendary, and, and, and you know, just in good faith. You know what I mean? Just in good faith that uh -huh. where he's not going to interfere with uh, Michael Doherty or Adam Wingard in their movies, but say, you know, this is when I make this movie. This is what I saw eventually, and when you see. A uh, 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 a sound bite like you know, you know God, Godzilla is 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 a, a call a call to arms when he's shooting at atomic breath in this image. It's like he's rallying other creatures. Is that what this is about? Is that what this is about? And in that regard, if this is the end of the movie, let's just say it is, then yes, Godzilla versus Kong is going to be fun, but it could possibly be a destroy all monsters situation. Where it's a, all these creatures come together and face off against Ghidorah. And that's not taking away nothing from what Michael Doherty wants to do, creating original creature designs. For me, I love that because in the last podcast, we talked about uh, how I love the Mudos. I just love those designs and I, I love how they just fit into just the kaiju verse, you know? Like, they could fit into a Toho movie if necessary. Like, I would love to see a Toho version of the Mutos, right? Um, 
So I'm okay with him creating new Mutos, new creature designs. I love that. But I'm also going to keep an open mind to, and I'm not talking about like Guy Gain or like very important characters. Anguirus, yes. I, I think I think Anguirus is a very important part of Godzilla's mythos, especially because it's the first enemy Godzilla ever fought as far as Kaiju, mm -hmm. you know? So Anguirus yeah. always holds a special place in my heart. So does Godzilla Raise Again. Uh, I, I absolutely love that movie. And I know a lot of people don't, but... Anguirus is one of those creatures that I could see, uh, you know, being a fit into this universe. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I just, I could see it being a fit. Something like a Gorosaurus could be a fit into this universe. Uh, fuck around Manda could be a fit into this universe. I'm not too sure about Kamakaris. If anything, Kamakaris would fit more as a Muto because of its ins insectoid-like features. Uh, same as Kamunga. But, but... Even if they weren't like Mutos, I'm okay with all of that stuff. Baragon is a little stretch. I love Baragon. Um, but, it, well, you know what? Because Triceratops had horns also, so, you know, horn nose. It could work. It could absolutely work. Why not throw Baragon in the mix, too, and legit make it a destroy all the monsters type melee? I am, and that wasn't, that wasn't a joke to uh, the Atari game that just happened. <laughs> but I could totally get behind uh, brand new creatures and revamping existing creatures the way they are doing for Rodan, Mothra, and King Ghidorah. Uh, the way yes. we've seen Kong revamp. The way we've seen Godzilla revamp. Fuck, you go back, you take a look at Kong Skull Island and think about this. Think about this, and it's very, very important. Those skull crawlers are actually in the original 1933 King Kong movie. And I love the fact that, um, uh, was this Jordan Voight Roberts? I think that's his name. Yeah, Jordan Voight Roberts. Right, Voight Roberts. He took those creatures that were just climbing the walls and had nothing. They were just background noise and created a new nemesis for Kong. I love that. I, I'm telling you, I was watching that and I was like, damn, that is just, that's just, that's superb, bro. That is just great fan service. And just, just knowing your shit. So my hat goes off to him. Kudos. I love it. And I would not mind seeing something like that coming from Michael Doherty. Um, again, wh whatever he's got in store, I'm ready and I'm open for it. And I can't wait for it. But uh, shit, this image, man, and this little interview here, man, it's it's something else, brother. It's something else. <laughs> Uh, one thing I really want to mention about it is that look at Godzilla's dorsal fins. That looks like there's more of them. You're right. Yes, it does. It did more like, than, yeah, because the size. Old rows anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, right, the first Those, the first one, he, I think he had the three rows, but I think the uh, the outer rows are very, very small. Right? Yeah, yeah. He had the three rows and the outer rows are really small. Yeah. Wow, man. It's such a cool image to look at, bro. I am excited. I'm stupid, I'm stupid, heavy, stupid, and I'm stoked. I'm stupid stoked for this. Oh my god! What's really cool though is like I like how the dorsal fins light up like a runes. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! Wow, I didn't. That is a great point, Chase. Jesus Christ, that's a great point, man. Really <laughs> pretty. <laughs> it just goes to show that uh that ancient slumbering, you know, mythology thing. Like, like this should be real. Where do people get these ideas for certain uh, cave paintings and, and these designs, these articulate designs? You ain't lying, man. That right there, I could totally see that on a cave wall as a painting. Some primordial, you know, oh, God. God, I can't wait. Jesus, when is May 2019? It's too far. It's too far. We need a time machine right now. Where the hell's Marty McFly? <laughs> All right? Where's my boy? Where, yo, where's the two German dudes from Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah? I need a damn time. I need M11 here right now. I need to get in a time machine and jump one, one year into the future. I need to see I need to see this movie. Fuck, I just need a week. I just want to see the damn trailer. Yeah, so, I mean, dude, imagine just like how it's going to be when you see that trailer. So let me ask you, so let me ask you, are you convinced now after seeing this image, are you convinced we're going to get a full trailer at Comic-Con? No, we, why wouldn't we? This is a movie still. So 
why it would be like I don't see why like how they couldn't at this point. Absolutely, that's how like, I that would be the biggest cock tease ever, and it'd be pointless <laughs> now. It really would. Like, don't wait for New York Comic Con. Screw all that bullshit. All right, let's get it going <laughs> right now, right here. Again, Marvel's not and Marvel's not attending Comic Con. If they are, it's a small little. It, 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 listen, we're not getting Infinity War or two or Avengers four, whatever you want to call it. Trailer. We're not getting Ca- Captain Marvel trailer. All right. So this right here is is what we need to focus on outside of the DC stuff. But this right now, in this pocket, this is bigger than all of that. This is Godzilla, dude. I'm, oh my God, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Um, but I would be remiss if we don't talk about another little uh, tidbit of news that broke out this week with one of the stars, Vera Firminga, who, and I, I don't know if I said her name right. I always, I can't. Her name is Vera, okay? That's all I know. Firminga. Yeah, it's got to be. Anyway, she was talking about that she has a way to control the monsters. Now, honestly, when I first seen this report, I, I man, I, I I was like, what? Like, I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm on board with that, you know? I'm a little weirded out by that. I'm like, what the fuck is this? But then I read this thing, and all of a sudden I think of my favorite human character in all of Godzilla, Mickey Sangusa. And I'm like, well, you know what? She didn't control the creatures, but she had a telepathic, uh, uh, you know the word I'm looking for. She was she was linked somewhat. Telepathic oh, connection. Thank you. <laughs> connection is such an easy word and yet so far from my mind. Yes, she had a telepathic connection with, with Godzilla and, and Junior. And I'm like, are they going to go that route? Are they going to introduce that? I mean, she's a well, scientist. Godzilla versus Space Godzilla too. Remember, they tried to have her control Godzilla. Exactly, which brings it all full circle, right? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But... The question I was going to ask, um, you know how they're saying, like, you know, Mike Doherty says, basically, on his Twitter, he, well, he just posted, he has risen, and it's Godzilla. I wonder if she, basically, I wonder if she calls on Godzilla to come beat the crap out of these monsters. Huh. Uh, I'm wondering about that. That that kind of made me wonder. Like, King Ghidorah comes out, Rodan comes out, Mothra comes out, and or or basically King Ghidorah comes out first, and then she's like, "Oh crap! What do we do?" Calls on Godzilla, and then all of a sudden, all these other monsters start coming, or something like that. I was just thinking about that. Like, you you, you would think at some point this mind control thing would play a big role. But how? But also, what if they use the monsters to just like to, like to go attack this evil organization that's kidnapping? I have I have a lot of questions about that. But I was just wondering, like, like what if she calls on Godzilla? Like she like wake up Godzilla, come save humanity again. <laughs> kind of like uh, kind of like the, the 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 girl from the uh that tribe who sung to King Caesar to wake up. Whenever you know, yeah. Now I would love it too. She she even sings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now here's the thing: like it, it's because it it feels very much like destroy all monsters. Remember the Kilax came down and they took control of the creatures. It feels like Final Wars where the the you know Exilians came down and they they took control of the monsters. Um, with with the exception of Godzilla and Final Wars, obviously. I'm thinking, and here's what I'm thinking. I, I'm leaning more towards the books. You remember the books? Oh, hell, even Godzilla 1985. I'm leaning more towards that. She's a scientist. I'm leaning more towards a lore instead of like mind control. You know? I'm leaning more yeah. towards, like in Godzilla 85, uh, uh, Professor Hayashida created that lore. To bring Godzilla to the to the edge of Mount Mahara, and then they detonate, and we all know what happens there, right? But it the was the saddest thing ever. <laughs> it, it really was because I'll, I'll tell it again. I don't care. I tell it a million times. When I first saw that scene, I cried. I cried. I cried. I cried. I was seven years old. My mom didn't take me to the movies to see it when it came out, so we rented it when it came out on on home on video, and I cried and cried, and, and it was a Big ass puddle on my floor because I was laying there crying. I was drowned in my own tears 
But that's besides the point. But that's what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking maybe because she is a scientist and she's figuring out a way to control these things. I don't mean control, and I don't think it's control in a way of mind control. I think it's more of a control where she can lure the creatures to a particular point, a particular place. So, I mean, but again, this is all speculation. I have zero clue. This is just what I'm thinking. But I, you know, I would, in all honesty, I would rather that be the case than some type of telepathic mind control stuff. And that's not knocking the Hesai series. It's my favorite shit. And like I said, Mickey Seragusa is my favorite human character in all of Godzilla lore. I love that character. Um, but I think it's more because this girl is a scientist. This woman is a scientist. I, we don't know what type of scientist she is yet. So I'm hoping that it's, it's like she's creating a lore. So, so let's say, for instance, Rodan is, is wreaking havoc in this one particular point or place. She can use the lore to bring Godzilla in. And then all of a sudden, Godzilla sees Rodan. Rodan sees Godzilla. Godzilla is the balance. And they fight you know, and that's just again, that's just pure speculation. That's when, and again, I believe the trailer is coming in a week and a half. When that trailer drops on July 21st, we'll get to, we'll, we'll know a little bit more. I, dude, I, there'll be no, everyone's underwear is going to have to be clean. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, it says right here, she has figured out a way to communicate with the creatures and potentially control them using their bioacoustics on a sonar level. So she is a, like a DJ for the monsters. Oh, so that's so, it. That's it. Then she's using with, 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 uh, with, with, with Joe Brody set up. You know? Mm -hmm. Wow, I love this idea. Do you think she's going to work for Monarch? I think that's what it is. I think she was part of Monarch, and these people captured her and their daughter. I, you know what? I I absolutely love that idea, man. I absolutely love. I was watching again. I was watching King Kong, uh, Kong Skull Island, and you know what I was thinking? I was like, you know what? I wouldn't be mad at if they had Loki and Captain Marvel in the end of Godzilla Two, right? Aged, of course, because you know. <laughs> It was uh, what the seventies when when they were young, and they were yeah. like, we, "We know a spot, you know, like we know something you don't." Um, God, oh Jesus, the speculation is ridiculous, man. The 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 ideas running through my brain right now are insane. Like I can't even contain them. I'm just I'm looking at this image and I'm just like, "What what is this? It's just beautiful." Oh, I love you, Benji. I love you. Well, also think think about like. What would be the reason for, you know, Sarazawa and, you know, G Dr. Graham uh, going to help Kyle Chandler's character rescue his wife and daughter? I mean, there would have to be some sort of reason, you know? Yeah, you're right. And it might be, it might be because they need them. And she's like the only way, like the wife's the only one or the daughter's the only one that can control the monster to go a different way or you know there's gotta be some reason well i hope it's listen i honestly like, i love millie bobby brown and i hope she plays a significant part but i just don't want her to be again I, i'm not i'm not sure if i'm okay with the whole telepathic thing in these movies but that's not saying it can't work because if they do do that and it does work then i'm totally on board i'm like all right cool they proved me wrong um but I think it's going to probably be more of uh, Vera Farmiga's character being able to, you know, lure these these creatures using the acoustics, you know, like fuck, a mating call, you know, that that's what the Mutos were doing. And then let's be for real here. All of these creatures, regardless on how we know their names and where they originated from in Japan, they're still Mutos. Technically, Godzilla is a Muto. You know, King Ghidorah is going to be a Muto, Rodan, Moth, they're going to be Mutos, but they give them names. You know, they didn't give the Mutos any names in Godzilla 1. It was like, there's the female, there's the male. You know, it was, that, that's where it was. But I, I, I think it's going to be more as like a bargaining chip. That's why they have, they, they kidnapped Millie Bobby Brown and they're like, look, 
you don't do what we say, and as fucked up as this sounds, it, it, it's it's compelling storytelling to an extent. We're gonna hurt. We're gonna hurt your daughter. So she has to. Okay, I gotta do what I gotta do. Uh, let me ask you this question. This is all speculation on the plot, right? Um, but it seems like it could be likely. What do you think the ratio uh, for human to monster action is going to be in this one? Because we know how people were angry uh, with Godzilla 1, the human to monster ratio in that movie. I honestly think that it might be equally balanced. Um, I think they might intertwine a lot of the human elements with the monsters. Like, especially because we, uh, 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 about a year ago, they put out uh, a behind the scenes footage of like Rodan coming out in this village. Like, it, it wasn't like you see Rodan or anything, but you see, I don't, I think you may have saw it. This guy posted it and it was in Mexico and they're filming it. And all of a sudden, the soldier looks up and points and goes, or one of the villagers points up and goes, look, it's Rodan, it's Rodan. And all these people start running away, and then there's big old dust cloud and everything that they artificially add and everything to it. So I think it might be like that, because they're trying to pile them up into evac helicopters. So I think they're gonna, they might add, you know, monsters to part of what the, the, the characters are going through, which... Still could work, but I still think on top of that, there's also going to be this balance of in-between. Like, it may be every other scene we see monsters, but the thing is, it's like, I don't care if it's like, I don't want, like, every single scene to have monsters. Right. I don't want, you know, I just want, when the scenes, the monsters are on the scenes, I want them to be good scenes. I don't need, like, my whole movie to be just Godzilla looking at us doing Godzilla shit. I like a good character arc. You know, I like a good in-between, you know, because it makes me, you know, hype and anticipate, all right, when are we going to see Godzilla or when are we going to see this monster? I don't need it to be right in my face throughout the whole movie, you know? So if, let's say, there's three or four or, you know, four or five scenes with Godzilla and the monsters in it, I'd be happy, you know? And then, the, you know, and then the human elements, but also it comes down to, like, how good are these characters going to be? You know, how invested are we going to get with these characters? Because I'm already invested in the Sarazawa. Yeah. But how much is he going to be in the movie? Um, Kyle Chandler, I like his, I like the movies he does. Super 8 was a great movie. I loved him playing the cop. Um, I loved him in King Kong. I don't have a doubt in my mind he's not going to be, you know, a horrible actor in this movie. Because usually what he does, he does pretty good. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown, I know she sells it. Um, I don't know anything about Vera Farmiga, whatever she does. I've never heard of her before. You gotta watch The Conjuring right. one and two. Just watch The Conjuring, dude. Just watch. Okay, it. okay. She's well, she's so she's. I don't know how she does acting wise, but she's I feel great. like there should be no reason why these actors. I mean, these actors just give you know Millie Bobby Brown and Kyle Chandler. They give out their best roles no matter what they do. They're those type of actors. So I don't know why they wouldn't do the same for Godzilla. So I'm not too worried about that. And, you know, Sally Hawkins, she's a 50-50. But Ken, you know, Sarazawa, I already like – but the thing is I already like those two characters. Right. I like Sarazawa and I like Graham. I like those characters. Yeah, and I don't you know, think – it, it was I, like the Batman and Robin of 2014. Absolutely, so, yes. Yeah, and I, I really, I really like them. You know, regardless how Sally Hawkins was in the movie, I still enjoyed her character. I, I you know, I, I enjoyed her being the assistant. And I think, I think she wouldn't have signed on if she didn't feel anything for the character, especially well, after she did uh, uh, Shape of Water. You know, she she said that that she wanted a bigger role in Godzilla too. She and she actually said in an article that that's what she's fighting for is a bigger role. So I don't think she would have stuck on if they, she didn't get it. Right. Uh, it, that's see, and that's perfect. I, she's. She's high caliber. She's very high caliber. Uh, look at The Conjuring, all right? Watch The Conjuring 1 and 2. Vera Farmiga is a very great actress. So when she was announced to be in Godzilla, I was like, whoa, for real? Okay. I can see. All right. I'm, I'm with that. I'm on board with that. But now that we're seeing more from it, what we see her saying, oh, I, I have a way to control the monsters. And then finding out in this little interview here with this amazing picture that I keep going back to. You know, that she gets kidnapped by a shady organization. Like, I'm... Uh, dude, I am, I'm all for it. I, like, I legitly cannot wait. I cannot wait 
for the 21st now. And, and, and also, another thing, too, is, like, what is this organization wanting with the monsters? Right. Like, what do, you, what do they expect to do with, like, a 350-foot-tall beast? Well, no, dude, think <laughs> about this. No, think about it. It's, it's, and I hate to bring up the comparison, but it's Jurassic Park. It's Jurassic World. We can use these things as weapons. You kidding me? If you can control a, 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 a creature... King Ghidorah. <laughs> yeah, if you can control a 400-foot creature with destructive power, you are you can control the world. You know? Yeah, you're a god. So that's like that's a that's a very interesting take on on Godzilla because we've never seen it like that. The aliens came down and was like, "We're gonna control the creatures until you give us what we want." This is different. This is like you know the world saying like like evil shady organizations saying, "Dude, it, it's politics," and I like that. It's weird. It reminds me of that one IDW uh, comic where they capture Godzilla in this, like, electric force field. And, oh, gosh, I don't remember. I think Space Godzilla. Yeah, it was Space Godzilla. And they have, they have Godzilla in this force field, and he just, just breaks through it with his atomic abilities. And like, what the hell? How did he do that? Like, I totally, like, it just reminds me of that so much. Like, just them trying to capture Godzilla. But... Like wow, just thinking about it, it's like it's like even though it's like it, how do you contain a monster of that size? Right. Well, no, again, so, it's 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 more like if this if this is going the way I think it's going, uh, and that's again like like the books, hell, even the old Dark Horse comics, a lore, you know. Uh, again, the Professor Hayashida he used it in Godzilla nineteen eighty five, and it worked. Godzilla was like, he, he migrated with the birds. So if we just find that right frequency, we can move Godzilla where we want. You're not controlling him, but you can bring him to wherever you want. That would be, again, instrumental when you look at, like, let's say this evil, shady organization, Hail Hydra, taking Godzilla <laughs> and just, like, moving him to wherever they, like, like, you know what? Let's bring him to San Diego. For no other reason. He's not... They're not making him destroy it, but the fact that Godzilla's making landfall into this populated area and walking through it, it's causing destruction and damage. It's 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 breaking the infrastructure. And I like that. I, I, I do like that idea. I can't lie. I dig that idea. Because it's something we haven't seen yet in Godzilla movie. No, we haven't, and it's really exciting. Uh but just 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 wait a minute. I just thought of something. Yeah, yeah. Marvel's not having much of a sh- play in Comic Con this year. Right. You just said Hell Hydra. <laughs> the secret organization is Hydra. And now we know who's going to be in the Avengers Infinity War Part 2. <laughs> Godzilla! <laughs> Yo, you know, it's funny you say that because it doesn't hurt that, like, half of the freaking Avengers have been in the Monsterverse. You had Loki, uh, Nick Fury and Captain Marvel, they were all in uh, Kong Skull Island, right? <laughs> Quicksilver was in Godzilla. I mean, like it's the, uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch was in Godzilla. It, it, uh, let's be for real here. Yeah, it's a crossover. Y'all didn't see it coming. You heard it first here on the G Show. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. It's the biggest crossover ever. Marvel has gotten the rights to Godzilla back. They're going to be making Godzilla comic books again. It's going to be this big G, this version of big G. And that's it. It's gonna We're going to get, in 2025, Godzilla versus the Avengers. That's phase five, phase five of Marvel. <laughs> Godzilla versus the Avengers. It's going to be insane. No, all right. We're just goofing around here. Y'all know that. But... Think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just put that maybe back in the file box. Yeah. And leave it open just to look at it. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, dude, I think we we've covered every single base we can cover. Uh, we, you know, next week we get we got the anime coming out. We got Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla, the anime, as I like to call it, uh, coming out on Netflix uh, on the eighteenth, and then. Then we got Comic Con, and do, I mean, shit, man. This right here is. It, you said it earlier in the podcast. You said you've been waiting and wanting, like, why isn't nothing coming out? And Comic Con's around the corner. Where the hell is this or that? And it sounded like me when, when we were waiting for Shin Godzilla stuff, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the difference between. Like all of us. <laughs> yeah, the difference between that and this is Shin Godzilla was coming out. 
in Japan like a week before we got the trailers, right? Like, oh. <laughs> we got nothing. Right, we got <laughs> shit. So, so it's like, this movie comes out in a whole in a year. We got a whole year to wait, like less than a year, but still, it's it, figuratively a year. Um, but Comic Con is right around the corner, and I think this is a very smart play on Legendary's part. Uh, Jurassic World is mopping up the Fallen Kingdom is mopping up uh, in, in the theaters, and it, it's coming to the end here now because we're we're about to start hitting where it's gonna fall off, right? So. Uh, you, you've got um, Mission Impossible coming out. It's going to take a huge chunk of that budget, but it already made its billion dollars, and and it's gonna it's gonna make more money as it goes along, right? But this is a very yeah. smart yeah. play on Legendary's part. Put out an image of Godzilla. Godzilla now more than ever is in the public eye again. Netflix is a huge part of people's routine. And whether or not you like Godzilla, I'm going to tell you this. You go put on Netflix on the 18th, even if you don't like Godzilla. If not, if, if, even if you're not going to watch Godzilla movie, right? You put on Netflix, guess what's going to pop up the first thing you see? Godzilla, uh, you know, whatever the hell, Battle in the High Never Strike City. Battle, yeah, whatever. Now, yeah. <laughs> I can't say it, but that's what's going to pop up because that's what's available right now. And it's just like, well, I don't know what it is, whether you choose to go buy it, and I'm sure a lot of people will, but the fact that it's going to be in your face, and what's going to be in your face? Godzilla, okay? So then you see something like this in your Entertainment Weekly, and you say, oh, shit, another, what, what the hell is all this Godzilla stuff? And you take a peek at it. That's all it is. It got us fanboys crazy. I mean, I am totally stoked. And thank and you for bringing that to my attention, dude. Oh, always, and I will always continue to keep us all posted. But uh, one thing I wanted to add, though, is, like, I've been on Twitter a lot lately, and I've been just in the Godzilla posts and everything in the forums for Godzilla. And I've been seeing a lot of stuff from celebrities that I know. Um, Adam from the show Adam Ruins Everything. Yes. Um he posted about Shin Godzilla and he said he absolutely loved the movie. You know, he thought it was great. And, and regardless about how I feel about Shin Godzilla, the fact, not just, I'm going to go back to it, but there was other people, metal musicians that I listened to the singer from, um, uh, God, what's the band? Um, uh, Machine Head, he's a big Godzilla fan. Uh, Jesse Leach from, um, Kill Switch Engage. Um, he's a big Godzilla fan. And all of these guys are influences, and they've all talked about Godzilla and Shin Godzilla. And the fact remains is that even though I did not like Shin Godzilla, I'm still glad that they're giving this this positive feedback pushing forward from Godzilla because it's only going to give more word out and strengthen the whole entire franchise. You know, it's going to... And, and I just I just love that because it's more people that are getting exposed and it's getting good feedback and it's just going to interest people and it, it, it's it's great you know it, it's it's good word to the type of franchise and I'm 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 just I'm glad for it. Oh, know? dude, I couldn't agree with you more on that. I couldn't agree. You know what I want again? You know, and everybody you know like that rocks with me knows that Star Wars is like. Seriously, it's like my number one thing. But Godzilla is right there. Like Godzilla is like 1.2. It's not even 1.5. It's like it's that close. Especially when I see shit like this, and I'm like, fuck you, Star Wars. Especially because I've just been, you know, upset with Star Wars as late, and I'm not one of those toxic fanboys. So get out of that shit, okay? Understand that I'm not toxic. All right, you. We can debate. But when I see things like that, I, I want to I want to say like I want Godzilla to be a franchise like Star Wars, where you have these people who absolutely love it to be a part of it. People like that celebrity status to be like, you know, I want to be in a Godzilla movie. But fuck, that's what Brian Cranston said when he did Power Rangers. Well, yeah, I voiced uh, one of the one of the, the monsters. I enjoyed that. Let me be in Power Rangers. I love Godzilla. Why not be in Godzilla? Samuel Jackson in, in, in Skull Island, like fuck Samuel Jackson in Star Wars. Yeah, let me be a let me be a stormtrooper. No, now you're a Jedi Master. Are you kidding me? 
And I like that. I really do. When you see these actors that we kind of come to love and appreciate outside of whatever our fandom may be, right? Because I'm not looking at you, George Clooney, and uh, Batman. I like you, George Clooney. I just don't like you, Batman. Uh, but when you take it and you look at these characters, these actors, uh, you know, outside, and then they want to be involved with something you love, that makes something you love even better. So I love that idea. I love it. I, 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 honestly, like, for, but the, again, this is just coming from me. In Star Wars, it's Godzilla. Those, those are the franchises. And then it, there's a, then it, then it goes down the line. There's Transformers and shit like that. And I'm not talking Michael Bay. I'm just talking Transformers in general. I would absolutely love to see more people be like, I want to be in one of these MonsterVerse movies. The way they're like, could somebody make me a Stormtrooper in Star Wars? You know, I would love to see that. Even if it's a minor role, I would love it. And again, Brian Cranston, I really don't think they should have killed this character off. Uh, I understand where... Uh, uh, Gareth Edwards was like, yeah, well, you know, he ran his course. This was his story. Nah, there could have been more. You didn't have to kill him, but I, uh, I'm i cool with it because I do love that movie. I do. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson in Kong Skull Island. I love the character. I get his character. He did not want the war to end. And now he found a new enemy. An enemy with the potential to threaten the entire world. And that is what this interview seems to be and that oh my god dude they're playing off of so many things i'm in love i cannot wait chase god damn it son take it away i can't talk no more oh <laughs> uh, no i look this this picture i've had such a crappy week and pa crappy past couple of months since basically christmas and this picture right here just makes me happy there's this warmness in my heart, and I'm feeling hype. Like, you know, like, well, I, I follow these movies a lot. I promote these the stuff on my page. I follow movies yearly. You know, last year was Jurassic World. Um, the year before that was Kong Skull Island. Now I'm out of those modes, and now it is Godzilla 2. And I am just really hyped. When I was doing the 2014 coverage, this... It was painful because I would stay up till five in the morning just trying to find whatever I could Com because I wanted to be competitive. I wanted to post more than any other pages and get more of an audience than any other page. I mean, uh, that's not necessarily true. I basically was just doing it because I had insomnia and I felt like, what the hell? Might as well. But I, that hype that I've had with 2014, I have that doubled now with Godzilla 2. And I just cannot wait until next May. I, I Screw that. I just can't wait till the trailer. I want to see the trailer. I want to know when it's coming, what it's going, you know, what it's going to be like, what is going to happen. I, I just, I, I, I just, uh, but this picture though, this picture is everything. This picture is beautiful. That is Godzilla doing something really cool. We've never seen Godzilla do something like yes, that before. Yes, exactly. I mean, never seen take, away, take away him shooting down giant meteors, but we never... Also, we don't know why he's shooting his atomic breath into the sky. So, ergo, you know, we never really see this, you know, and I am really interested to why he's doing this, you know, and... and I just don't think we've ever really seen something like this before. And it just looks really beautiful and majestic. And I just love, I'm so, I, I, okay. For all of you people out there that said, my Doherty is going to change Godzilla hundred percent and, and make him unrecognizable. And all of you were so dead set on him doing that and believed it and trying to cause gripe and hype between the fandom. You guys are assholes and ha ha ha. This Godzilla looks absolutely the same as 2014, but cooler. See, I love it. So what you're saying is Michael Doherty did not shin Godzilla. Gareth no, he Godzilla. did not shin Godzilla. <laughs> there you go, 2014 is better than shin Godzilla. That's a fact! So, I don't care. Look, they, you know what? They, a lot of people might hate that. I don't even care. But listen, brother, we're, there, there's nothing else we could say. Um, we, we, we got a week, but less than a week before the anime... And then 
a week before we get into the fucking heavy hits, which is this trailer. So I'm going to wrap this up right now. My brother, I love you so much. Thank you for pointing this out to me. Thank you for joining me. Always, always. And I can't wait till we talk about the anime. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to be on the anime. Um, Listen, I don't know if we're going to do the anime uh, uh, a review right after it drops or if we're going to wait till Comic-Con and do it in between shit. But the it fact might be that easier is... to do that for Comic Con. We'll have more stuff to talk about. Well, it depends because Godzilla Two might take up all the hype. I, I, that's weird. So. That, that's pretty much what I'm thinking. It's gonna take all the hype. So just listen, guys. We'll be on. We will. You will see a podcast. There will something will pop up. Um, I, I just want to thank all of y'all again. Thank you, G73, Megalon, Chase. I love you, my brother. I love you too, dude. This is a lot of fun. Absolutely. And again, I love all y'all out there, man. Thank y'all for watching this. Uh. Holy crap, our first look at Godzilla 2. Godzilla shooting the fucking blue flame into the sky. It is something to be beholden to. I love it. I cannot wait. As a Godzilla fan, I am G1. And I will definitely see y'all when that trailer drops in about a week. Peace.